Hi there. It's time for another Monday is Fun Day at home. Our first story today is called Scribble Stones. It's by Diane Albert and it's published by, I always forget to look. Hmm. I think she published it herself. and is dedicated to her children, Ryan and Anna, who love to play with a giant stone pile in the backyard, which inevitably inspired this story. Now I'm gonna move this just a little closer so you can see the pictures. Okay. This story is about one happy stone who was gray and round and rarely alone. He lived with the others, all stacked in a pile, and waited calmly with his large, friendly smile. That's him up on top. Each stone had a purpose, but it wasn't known yet. Some would be landscaping, and some a stone pet. There were so many things that stones could be. The hardest part was just waiting to see. Stone knew that his purpose would brighten someone's day. He just wasn't sure how or in what kind of way. He imagined the things that he might soon become as he watched all the stones get picked one by one. But his happy face slowly turned to a frown as he watched the tall piles start to dwindle on down. Although he was worried, he tried not to care until it was clear he was the last one there. And then finally it happened. Stone was quickly picked up and he was placed on a desk next to a very large cup. As Stone looked around, he thought, this is so great, but he soon discovered he was a dull paperweight. I'm supposed to bring happiness, not hold paper still. There must be a mistake. This can't be my skill. And then all of a sudden, a splatter flew high, and then some bright scribbles came wriggling by. They headed right toward a short paper stack, and they filled up the paper on the front and on the back. They were all making art. It was happening so fast, Stone feared that the paper would simply not last. He couldn't believe just how much the pile grew, and then he heard a small cry from the fun splatter crew. Oh, we knew that this pile was getting too tall. There's no more paper. We have used it all. The scribbles all cried. They now saw it too. This is a disaster. Oh, what will we do? Well, Stone didn't want the scribbles to cry, so he thought of something that they all could try. He slowly rolled down the very large pile and said, I know how to make you all smile. I know I'm not paper, but I like art too. Do you think you could spare some red, yellow, and blue? Well, they loved the idea and could not wait to start. Scribble began making a happiness heart. Splatter then painted some pale baby blue. Another Scribble added a sunny gold hue. It didn't take long for more stones showed up. And soon the line grew behind the large red cup. And to some stone's surprise, he was picked up once more. He'd never heard of this happening before. Well, more art was added, and he was on his way to become a small gift to brighten someone's day. Nearby, another stone's journey had begun. He was spreading such happiness and having great fun. And each time he traveled, someone added their part, sometimes just a scribble, sometimes fancy art. And with each new layer, there was a story to share, and soon scribble stones were seen, well, everywhere. They traveled the planet. It was quite an event, bringing happiness and fun wherever they went. Now thousands of stones inspire creativity each day. 
all because of a paperweight with a will and a way. And in the back, they have what they call a scribble stone art project. How it works, they say find a stone and add some art, a scribble, a splatter, or a happiness heart. Then give it away and let someone know that this scribble stone makes happiness grow. It's so very simple and easy to do. Just add some more art and give it away too. So guess what? That's what we're gonna do for our craft today. We're going to decorate some rocks. I'll be right back. So for today's craft, we're going to be making some rocks of kindness. So here's what you'll need. First of all, of course, you'll need a rock. It can be any size or shape. Um, I often suggest taking a look at the rock, seeing if the shape of it suggests anything to you, like what it might want to be. This would make a nice piece of cheese, I think. Uh, wash your rock and make sure it's nice and clean because then the paint will work better. Then you're going to need some paint. I'm using acrylic paint for ours uh, today. You can also use paint pens. These are really good for detail work like eyes and mouths and polka dots. You can get those at a craft store or at Walmart. Just be sure when you're using them and when you're using your acrylic paints, shake them up before you use them. Sometimes they can settle or separate and you want to make sure that they're flowing nicely. So shake it up. If you're going to be using the liquid paint, then you're going to want some paint brushes, and I recommend having a couple different sizes. These are good for covering the rock totally, and then you want some smaller ones that will help you do details. You may want a pencil. I like using the eraser on a pencil for making round things, and that way you're sure that you've got two that will be exactly the same size. You're going to want some bowls or something to put your paint in if you're using uh, the acrylic paints. Um, these are just plastic bowls. You can also use the lids off of old Pringles containers or any kind of a plastic lid, but you need that. One of the bowls I filled with water so that I can wash off my brush at the end. And one other, a oh, couple other things. I've covered my uh, surface here so that I won't get paint on the table itself. I've also got some newspapers underneath in case it gets messy and also some paper towels. And the last thing I have is a can of acrylic spray paint. Um, it's actually a clear enamel. And if you're going to be hiding your rock somewhere outside and you want to be sure that it stays intact, you're going to want to spray this on it. It's kind of like a covering to protect it. This is something I would say mom or dad would do. You wouldn't do it yourself because of the fumes, but it does help keep your rock from getting washed out by rain. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to what I like to do is do a base coat, especially if your rock has some uneven surfaces. Um, pour out some white paint and then paint it just like I did this one. I didn't do the whole thing because it's going to be sitting on the ground and I didn't need that, but I wanted to have a nice base for it. So you can go ahead and do that and then let it dry. And this is a video that you're going to probably start and stop and start and stop because you're going to have to wait for your paint to dry between coats. So let's pretend we've just painted this rock and magically it's all dry. So now I can choose what else I'm going to want to put on it. So I think I'm going to make this one look like, hmm, what do you think? I thought of a donut, but I don't have any brown or beige. So I'll have to do something else. Maybe I could make a bunch of grapes on it. So I'm going to take my purple paint, pour it into the bowl. It's pretty thick. I don't need to put a lot in there. And since I'm going to be drawing grapes, I probably don't need the big brush, but I would have used this brush to do the base coat with the white. So I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush, but not as small as I have, and then dip it in the paint and just draw some circles. And the surface of your rock may be uneven, so sometimes it's hard to get 
an exact shape that you want. I'm not using the pencil because I wanted these to be a little bit bigger, but these are going to be my grapes. It doesn't look like much of a bunch of grapes yet, but we'll let it dry a little bit. And when you're doing this at home, you can either stop and wait for it to dry, or you can fast forward through the video and listen to the other story and then come back and hopefully your project will be dry. And sometimes it helps to turn your project a little bit so you can see where you might need more paint. Artists often look at things in different angles because when you look at it in a different way, you see it differently. Okay, so there's my bunch of grapes. I'm going to need to let it dry. If I'm done with my purple paint, then I'm going to stick this brush right into the water so that I can wash it off. I really don't want it to dry on there. You can uh, paint off a little bit of it, which means you can rub it on your newspaper to get a lot of the paint out. And then, I don't know if you can see my bowl of water here but I've got paint out of it, and I can just dry it off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write some words up here. I hope I can do it without waiting for this to dry. I had primed this, and what that means when you've got a paint pen is that you put it on your newspaper and pump it a little bit until you're sure that the paint is running. done with that part and I'm still going to wait for it to dry but what I've written on there is isn't life grape just a play on words and when my purple paint is dry what I think I will do is I will go around each of the grapes with this black uh, paint pen just to define them but otherwise I'm all set once it's totally dry then I would take the Krylon paint this is actually Rust-Oleum but I would take that take it outside set the rock down somewhere uh, so I'm not holding it, and then have mom or dad spray it until it's all covered over with the glossy paint. And once it's all dry, then you can go and spread some kindness. You can do words on it, a message. Um, I also did one that was just a smiley face. I think he needs a nose, though, don't you? Put back at you smiling if you happen to see it as you were taking a walk. So that's our craft project today, some painted rocks, and I'll be looking for maybe a rock that you made sometime when I'm out for a walk. Thanks for watching and keep on going back to the story. We've got another good one all about making burgoo stew. Hmm. See you later. Well, while our rocks are drying, why don't we have our second book? This one is called Burgoo Stew. It's by Susan Patron and it's the pictures are by Mike Shannon, and it's published by Orchard Books. Now, what do you think of these guys? Trouble? Maybe. A crowd of five rowdy bad boys set out to the edge of town to find old Billy Q. They'd been so quarrelsome and contrary that even their own mamas had shooed them away. Their stomachs were empty and their eyes were flesh and trouble. They wanted to see if Billy Q had anything good to eat and if he did, well, they aimed to steal it. They found him hunkered down outside his big old black cooking pot. Billy Q looked at those bad boys with their big knuckly hands and their bright cantankerous eyes. You give us to eat, they yelled and cranky mad they kick the dirt with their big feet. You give us all your food, they shouted, and feisty mad they crowded in close to old Billy Q. Now Billy Q wasn't afraid. He knew those boys, had known them well since they were wee hungry lads. Mm, he said, I could make some burgoo stew, which is the best thing of all when you're hungry, he said. And it's even good when you're not. 
It's just about the best stew in the world because I always stir in a secret ingredient, something you can't see, smell, touch, or taste. Give us burgoo stew. Show us how to make it, hollered those big, mean, hungry boys. You boys got to fill up the cooking pot with water and light the fire underneath, said Billy Q, while I work on finding the secret ingredient. So the five boys filled the big pot with water. They built a fire under the pot and lit it. Now, will you kindly go up to the house and fetch the salt and pepper and my basket of dried herbs? That's all I need to make delicious burgoo stew. And as those boys turned away toward the house, they heard a loud plop in the stew pot water. What was that? They demanded. Oh, that was the stone what holds down the secret ingredient I just threw in, said Q. Without that ingredient, this wouldn't be a fine stew at all. Now, go after that salt and pepper. And if any of you boys has a mama with an onion she don't need, well, you ask her kindly for it. Now the first skinny, weedy, big boy with holes in his shoes remembered his mama had a wicker basket full of onions, though not much of anything else. So he ran home faster than water runs downhill. This burgoo stew is beginning to cook up just right because the magic ingredients started working, said Billy Q. Now, I wonder whose mama has a carrot she could spare. Well, the second mean-looking big boy with snarls in his hair remembered his mama had a bunch of carrots, though not very much of anything else. Ask her kindly, said Billy Q, and that boy ran home as fast as a strong wind blowing leaves. Ah, it's beginning to simmer as only burr goose do simmer, said Q. Doesn't look like much yet but that magic ingredient's working even stronger. It's near perfect now, but mm, what would make this stew the best ever is a plain turnip. Of course, strictly speaking, we don't need it, but a turnip sure would be nice. Well, the third lanky, cranky big boy with dirt behind his ears remembered that his mama had a few turnips, though not very much else. He ran home faster than a stone sinks in a pond. He had it in his mind that just once, just maybe, he'd ask his mama kindly. Well, Billy Q stirred that burgoo stew mm, slowly and he leaned over to smell it in with his long bony nose. Ah, he said happily, now the magic ingredient is well mixed in. I have not made a stew this good in about 30 years. One thing though, one thing that I guess would be, oh, scrumptious is just a little hunk of fresh meat. Just some small stringy bony hunk is enough if anyone's mama has some to spare. Well, the fourth scrawny naughty big boy with smudges on his forehead remembered that his mama had some hunks of meat though not very much of anything else. He thought that maybe, if he asked her kindly, she'd give him one. And he ran home faster than drops of rain fall to the ground. Oh, this stew doesn't need anything else to be finer than a summer day in the mountains, said Billy Q. He was stirring and he said, although my own dear mama used to like to put a potato in sometimes. Yeah, just a wee potato sounds just right about now for this particular stew. Well, the fifth rough, tough big boy with grease on his knuckles remembered that his mama had a sack of potatoes, though not very much of anything else. Kindly, he thought. I'll ask her kindly. And he ran home faster than a boy runs when he's hungry. Now Billy Q hunkered down by his big cook pot and he kept an eye on the fire. He smiled because he did enjoy having company, especially when he was cooking burgoo stew. The five boys came running back and they carried lumpy things in their pockets and in their shirt tails and clutched in their mitts and one boy even had a bulb of garlic right in his cuff. 
And when Billy Q washed everything, he noticed that the boys' mamas had kindly sent a number of onions, several carrots, and turnips too. It sent a good hunk of meat and more potatoes than he could hold in his two hands. He put them all in the pot and stirred slowly, added some salt and pepper and the garlic, and pretty soon, oh, the boys could smell that burgoo stew too. Now there are six wooden bowls up in the house and six pewter spoons and six blue napkins and a big loaf of fresh baked bread, said Q. Would someone kindly fetch them? And the four big boys with flashing eyes ran to the house while the fifth stood sniffing and sniffing the stew. Oh, it smelled good. Burgoo stew made from practically nothing, plus a special magic ingredient. Allows me to serve you, my friends, said Billy Q, and he filled each bowl right up. And the five boys ate their stew and then kindly asked for some more. And from that day on, they were still big and rough and knuckly and weedy and rowdy and dirty and lanky and cranky and scrawny and naughty with snarls in their hair. But they were never ever quite so bad or quite so hungry again. Now, if your rock is all dry, well, why don't you take it out and spread a little kindness around where you live. I hope I'll see you again next week when we get together for Monday is Fun Day. Bye-bye.